TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Effective immediately, all people entering Israel from anywhere around the world will be forced into a 14-day quarantine. Any foreign nationals that enter Israel will have to provide their ability to self-quarantine. If they cannot, they will be barred from entering the Jewish state. In spite of growing measures that limit the freedom of movement in congregations, celebrations are taking place across Israel for the Jewish holiday of Purim, which commemorates the salvation of the Jewish people in ancient Persia, as recounted in the biblical book of Esther. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu announced last night that effective immediately, every person returning to Israel from anywhere around the world will have to remain in a self-imposed quarantine for 14 days. After a series of difficult discussions, we made a decision. Everyone who comes to Israel from abroad will be forced to be in a quarantine for 14 days. This is a hard decision, but it is important to ensure the safety of the public, and the safety of the public is first before everything. This decision will be in place for a few days. במקביל אנחנו מקבלים החלטות לשמור על כלכלת ישראל. It is imperative to highlight that self-quarantine is compulsory. This measure applies to Israelis and foreign nationals alike. The Israeli Population and Immigration Authority issued a statement underscoring that every foreigner arriving at one of Israel's international border crossings will have to prove that they have a place where they can self-quarantine in Israel. If they cannot, they will be barred from entering the Jewish state. In light of this drastic measure, the two smaller Israeli airliners, Israel and Al-Kia, announced their decision to cancel all scheduled international flights. Israel stressed, however, that it would offer return flights to Israel for all of its passengers who are currently overseas through the end of this week, after which it will cancel all scheduled international flights through the end of March. Al-Kia, on the other hand, announced that it limit its operations effective immediately to domestic flights exclusively. Meanwhile, returning Israelis voiced frustration over the situation this morning, but stopped short from rebuking the drastic measure. I'm coming from uh, Washington, D.C. I was at the APAC policy conference uh, there uh, a week ago. I've been in the States for two weeks, and a few hours before I left, I heard that I'm going to have to be stuck in my house for two weeks, uh, which isn't exactly the best case scenario, but uh, as we say uh, in Hebrew. Uh, we came from uh, Bansko in Bulgaria, and we landed in Israel, and we heard from the news that we need to be two weeks in our homes. Nobody told us in the, here in the airport. Uh, it's very sad because we're not going to work, not for study. Uh, that's life. It is important to mention that Israel is not the only country in the region that decided to isolate itself from the rest of the world. Italy, which faces the worst known outbreak among Mediterranean and European states, announced its decision to classify the country as an isolated zone in its entirety. Returning to Jerusalem, where Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu held a multilateral video conference with heads of several European states in an Israeli-initiated bid to promote a united global effort to limit the spread of the coronavirus and to deal with the expected implications. The Israeli leader highlighted three points on which the multilateral task force would work to achieve. According to Netanyahu, the expected impact on the global economy, in light of the constriction of air travel, raises the need for designated so-called clean airports that will serve to maintain shipments of vital commodities. Uh, we can get very quickly into a position of shutdowns of aircraft or constriction of air travel. That is happening as we speak. We've constricted uh, air travel to people who can come and be tested. I know other countries are doing the same. That's going to happen. In order to assure supply chains, uh, I propose that we have safe hubs and safe planes for travel. In other words, we can designate uh, airports for us, for all of us, uh, in Europe, and we say this is a clean airport. We apply consistent efforts to keep it uh, to keep it clean. We scrub it, we disinfect it all the time, round the clock, and we also test uh, the people who work there all the time.
In addition to proactively safeguarding the national economic systems from possibly collapsing, Netanyahu reiterated the need for mass testing of the public to limit other people from potential exposure to the contagion. The third point that the Israeli leader highlighted includes the exchange of knowledge to help each other improve national conduct, which will ultimately eradicate the contagion. The third is, of course, the exchange of uh, best practices. We each uh, have our own experiences. We see what works, what doesn't work, and we can uh, trade with each other. In addition to Jerusalem's efforts to mobilize an international task force to combat the contagion, it is also coordinating with the Palestinian Authority as the latter faces a relatively minor outbreak of its own. After the town of Bethlehem, which is heavily reliant on tourism, was put under military closure over several confirmed cases of the coronavirus, the Palestinian leadership in Ramallah announced, effective immediately, that in the next several hours, all tourists will leave any of the so-called Palestinian territories and any visiting foreign nationals will be barred from entry until further notice. السياح الأجانب المتبقين كما تحدث 64 سائح سيغادرون جميعهم البيت لحم خلال ساعات وبالتالي لن يتبقى في الأراضي الفلسطينية أي من السواح وهناك توجيهات من دولة رئيس الوزراء بعدم استقبال أي سواح في الأراضي الفلسطينية the Palestinian Authority's government spokesman further revealed that Ramallah is also deliberating a closure over the territories under its control from the rest of the world if such a measure would serve the interest of the public's health and security. كما تحدث رئيس الوزراء في هذا الصباح أننا ندرس احتمالية إغلاق مع الجانب الأردني والإسرائيلي إذا ما تطورت الأمور لا سمح الله بإغلاق الجحور كل الإجراءات التحوطية والاحترازية سنتخذها حماية للمواطنين Turning to Washington, where U.S. President Donald Trump held a press briefing together with the members of the Coronavirus Task Force, which is headed by Vice President Mike Pence, who revealed that American pharmaceutical companies are working tirelessly to develop medicine that will provide relief to people that contracted the contagion. In addition, reported progress is being made in the area of mass public testing, as two U.S.-based pharmaceutical companies have already managed to develop a home test for self-examination. Last week, uh, at the President's direction, we met with leaders in industries from nursing homes to airlines, pharmaceutical companies, uh, commercial labs, and it's had great, great impact. Uh, pharmaceutical companies are already working uh, uh, literally around the clock on the development of uh, therapeutics that will be medicines that can bring relief to people that contract the coronavirus. Uh, and I know the, how pleased the president was to learn that the commercial labs in this country, uh, led by companies like uh, LabCorp and Quest, have already uh, brought a test forward and are taking that to market effective uh, today. Turning now back to Israel, where celebrations are taking place across the country for the Jewish holiday of Purim, which commemorates the salvation of the Jewish people in ancient Persia, as recounted in the biblical book of Esther. During the day, the largely secular population of Israel commemorates the holiday mainly by dressing up in different costumes and feasting with family and friends, in accordance with the ancient tradition that is rooted in the book of Esther, chapter 9 and verse 28. And while the Israeli health ministry continually reports new cases of the coronavirus and urges the public's caution over the contagion, Israeli parents defiantly refuse to limit their children's celebratory joys. I feel that this is the, their holiday. I don't want to spoil the holiday. So, you know, this is like a flu, uh, the corona. And I think that a little bit they, they exaggerate uh, all this thing about it. For me personally, I'm not so afraid. And also it's very important to me to give the children a very good feeling of Purim and happiness. It's very important uh, holiday for the children. So we try to be very happy for them. And I'm not so concerned personally. Thank you for watching us. I encourage you to continue to pray for the peace of Jerusalem as well as the peace and salvation of Israel. Jonathan Hassan, have a Erev Tov, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.